My friends, welcome back. This is a video I've I've wanted to make it for so long. Like when I actually when I started my channel, I wanted to make this video. But there was just a small catch. You know, it's still a little bit of a hang up. I just felt like I needed to be able to do the splits before I could explain how I got the splits. You know? Just one follows the other. In my mind, there's two types of people in this world. You know, there's the elastic bands, the ones that just chuck a foot behind their head. You know, it's just not a thing. And there's, there's the rest of us. I was the kind of girl that just kind of avoided stretching. It's just not really my thing. I just want to get straight into the meat of the workout. That's, that's me. I'm not saying that's the best thing to do. <laughs> and it's not like I wasn't told to stretch. Like my athletics coaches were all about the stretching. I would just do the bare minimum. You know, they'd look around and I'd be like, I'd make it look like I was stretching, but I wasn't stretching, which is kind of an art in itself. And when I started to do the front splits, I was a long way off so far. You know, my crotch and the ground, they didn't know each other. You know, it was a long distance relationship. And I feel like if I was that far away from being able to do the front splits as a complete beginner, then you guys can do it as well. There's no reason why you can't do it. So we're gonna go through exactly what I did to get the front splits. Then we're gonna look at the science to see the most effective way to improve your range of motion or flexibility, and then we'll apply that to the front splits. And then, before you know it, that'll be you with your leg behind your head. Actually, that'll be you with two legs behind your head. I'm just saying, prepare yourself to be the flexible friend. So the good thing is that the front splits can easily be broken down into flexibility of two areas. The hip flexors of the legs going backwards and then the hamstrings of the legs going forwards. And yeah, I basically looked at lots of different stretches, the most effective stretches to stretch the hip flexors and the hamstrings. They really worked for me. Obviously there's more, but these ones are First we're going to start with the hip flexors. I've got my um stretching my stretching buddy you know just find yourself a little cushion and you guys will be best friends whilst you get the splits okay so this is the knee flip okay so this is the kneeling hip flexor stretch this is amazing for feeling your hip flexors all you want to do is make sure that your hips are facing forward you really push your glutes forward so that you can feel the stretch in the front of your leg and then just breathe nice deep breaths you don't want it to be too painful. It should just feel like a nice stretch. Make sure that your foot and your knee are facing down. That's why I have like a pillow, which basically just saves my life. And you just really want to feel that stretch like on the front of your hip. That's your hip flexors. And then to make it more advanced, you can just bring your foot up. But again, make sure that your hips are facing forwards. So obviously a hip flexor stretch is unilateral. So you wanna make sure that you're doing the same amount of time on one leg as you do on the other as well to keep that stretching balanced out. And that's basically it for hip flexors. Honestly, you don't need to have a ton of stretches. You just need like a couple that you can really, really feel. So now we're moving on to stretching the hamstrings. The hamstrings are being stretched on the leg going forward in the splits. A couple of stretches that I like here. The first is the kneeling bent over hamstring stretch. And you really wanna make sure that you're sticking your butt out and behind you so that you really feel that stretch in the back of your leg. Not like your glutes, not your lower back, but really in your hamstrings. And then the second stretch that I really love to do for my hamstrings is the standing hamstring stretch. So you basically wanna pick a box or a table, in my case, that is just slightly lower than your hip height, and then put your foot up onto it, keep your leg nice and straight, keep both of your feet facing forwards, push back at the hip, keep your back nice and neutral, and you should feel a really nice stretch on the hamstring of the leg that's up on the table. If you guys wanna make this extra hard for yourself because you're having like a really flexible day, you can start bending forward, just make sure that your hips stay in the same position, like you're still like sticking your butt out. You're gonna feel it, I swear. It's just 
just having a bit of a wiggle. None of this is me. That's all, that's all its own doing. And I'll split my time evenly between both of these hamstring stretches and I'll also make sure to do it on both sides. So now we've stretched our hip flexors left and right with two stretches. We've stretched our hamstrings left and right with two stretches. And then we can go into we can go into the splits. So I like to do the splits right at the end of stretching my hamstrings and my hip flexors. It's like a little bit of a warm up, but it's good to get into the splits. And when you're starting off, you might need some support. So either with some chairs or with some cushions underneath your crotch or both, you know? And over time, as your crotch to floor distance decreases, you can start to use less support. So maybe get rid of the chairs, maybe put your hands down by your side on the ground, slowly remove the cushions from under your crotch. Think about it like a chat with your parents about sex. You know, like it's uncomfortable, but it's not painful. That's, that's where you wanna be with the front splits. You wanna be uncomfortable, but not in excruciating pain. And just a couple of tips for when you're in the front split stretch, making sure that you're always rotating your hips so that you're facing forwards and then that your front and back leg are forming a nice straight line. When I first started, my back leg was kind of doing its own thing, but it wasn't really a straight line, it was like a, like a half moon. And also keeping your chest up and your back nice and upright because I also want to always lean forwards. By keeping your back upright, you're doing a nice even stretch between your hip flexors and your hamstrings. Now for some science. Okay, so now that we've got our stretches down, the next thing that we can use the science for is figuring out how much and how often to stretch. Now, I'll be honest, there's not like a great body of literature. I feel like a lot of the methodologies are flawed, so I don't feel super comfortable coming up with like a definitive conclusion, but I still think there are some suggestions that help us find like a really good routine for us. So there's a systematic review which has looked at some of the highest quality research in this area. So they've looked at 23 papers and there are a couple of areas where we can start to form some conclusions. So the first was in the area of total duration of stretching per week. So how long you should be stretching per muscle per week to get the best results or the most improvement in range of motion. So they separated the 23 studies into three different groups. Subjects that were stretched for less than five minutes per muscle per week. Uh, subjects that stretched, my God, such a tongue twister. Subjects that stretched for between five and 10 minutes and subjects that stretched over 10 minutes per muscle per week. And what they found was that there was a statistically significant difference between the groups that stretched less than five minutes and those that stretched five minutes or over. So their conclusion in their words was, there seems to be a timely relation with range of motion improvements, being this mainly related to total volume per week with a minimum of five minutes per week needed to elicit a significant response. But there was no statistically significant difference between the groups that stretched between five and 10 minutes and those that stretched 10 minutes plus. So this is really interesting because the early research is suggesting that there's a plateau in additional flexibility gained beyond a certain point. So stretching for longer beyond that point doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna get more flexible quicker. So it seems like the optimal amount of time to be stretching per muscle per week seems to be about five to 10 minutes. So you're increasing your range of motion, but you're also not wasting time because that time is money you know? And I know there's loads of YouTube videos out there that are like, I got my splits in the month, I got my splits in a week. Even, I even saw one that said I got my splits in a day. I'm not even lying. And I'm not saying that it's impossible. I'm just saying, if that is true, we just all need to take a step back and just appreciate the miracle that we have seen. Um, because it is so unlikely. <laughs> I mean, there are outliers. Flexibility depends on lots of different factors. I'm just saying that for the majority of us, if you're going in thinking that you can get the splits in a day, I just, even though you might have put in like 
the right amount of active stretching time, um, your body needs longer than a week for it to kind of repair and elicit those physiological responses. So in my case, it took me like three to four months. And I think the trick here is finding a routine that you enjoy, that you can stick to, that's easy for you to do regularly, several times a week for the medium term, like two to four months. So the next conclusion that we can start to draw from this early research is to do with the frequency of sessions. So now we know how many minutes we should be spending in a stretch per muscle per week, how do we split that across the week? How many days should we be spreading that across? So across the studies in this systematic review, those where subjects stretched five, six, or seven days per week showed statistically significant improvements in range of motion compared to those that only stretched two or three times a week. So on top of that earlier conclusion where the authors said that we needed at least five minutes per muscle per week to elicit a significant response in range of motion, they also conclude that five days is the minimum weekly recommended frequency to achieve significant range of motion improvements. So now we can combine both conclusions. So we can take our five to 10 minutes per muscle per week of stretching and then split that across five, six, or seven days. Now, I personally like to lean towards five days because I'm really busy and it just works with my schedule, plus I like to have a few rest days. Okay, it just works better with me. And to be honest, I also felt that five days was my sweet spot because it allowed me to recover from my stretching. So if five or six sessions a week feels a little bit too often, then you can always reduce it to like three or four. Just make sure that you keep that same total time stretched per muscle per week. So then each stretching session, so hard to say, each stretching session will be a little bit longer. On a personal note as well, I would just like to say that this science has been eye-opening for me. Um, and I think I know why I'm not getting my box splits. I mean, if the science is telling me anything, it's that you gotta stretch little and often. You know, just a little bit, do it often. Um, which has been the complete opposite of what I've done for my box splits. What I do for my box splits or middle splits, same thing, is I leave about two months between my stretching sessions. And when I do a stretching session, I go hard. And I just think, I think that maybe that's where I'm going wrong here. I have footage of me in the box splits for over a year now, me trying to get into the box splits. And I'll tell you what, nothing has changed. The height hasn't, has not gone down. I've changed hair color, I've changed hairstyles, I've changed clothes. I've, you know, I've even gone through like injuries and out of injuries. And the one constant in my life is that height of my box splits. Like it just has not, the process I was doing was not working. Okay, so I feel like I've tested out the other extreme and it's been highly unsuccessful. So I feel like little and often, probably the way to go. So now we've got our exercises. We know how much and how often to stretch. Now we can combine and find the best splits stretching routine. So let's say we're going for 10 minutes per muscle per week and we've got four areas that we're hitting. Hip flexor left, hip flexor right. I don't know my left and right, okay? It doesn't matter. Here. Hamstrings left and right. Got that one right. Um, and that's it. So the hip flexor stretches and the hamstring stretches target one of those groups at a time. And then the splits targets two of those groups at a time. So across the whole week, we want to stretch five minutes for the hip flexor left, five minutes for the hip flexor right, five minutes for the hamstring left, five minutes for the hamstring right, five minutes for the splits left, five minutes for the splits right, and then that totals 30 minutes of total stretching for your splits. And it hits 10 minutes of stretching per muscle per week in all of the muscles. So now we split that total week into five days. That's gonna be per day, one minute of hip flexor left, one minute of hip flexor right, one minute of hamstring left, one minute of hamstring right, one minute of splits left and one minute of splits right. Now the research isn't clear of whether you should split that 60 seconds up into two lots of 30 seconds or just go for the whole minute. I personally like to go through the whole minute because it actually allows me to like relax my muscles and just chill. And I know that I showed you like two different exercises for the hip flexor stretches and for hamstring. I just pick one that I'm fancying to do that day and I go for the full 60 seconds. I don't worry about 
doing both of those exercises. I just pick one. The next thing I wanna talk about is intensity. Um, this is never something that I considered. I didn't even think about it when it came to stretching. Think of intensity as like how much do you just wanna cry out for help to your mum to cradle you in her arms. That's how, that's just think of intensity in that way. I know when I was stretching for gymnastics, I know that the culture there was just like, attack it, like go for it. If you let out a little tear, it's all part of it, you know? Um, but some of the research that I was looking at suggested that actually there wasn't any significant differences between stretching at low intensity and high intensity, which is really good. So specifically, there was one high quality study that was looking at low intensity stretching versus high intensity stretching on range of motion. And they found that there was no statistically significant difference in range of motion improvements between those that stretched lightly and those that stretched all out. And there are a couple of mechanisms that might explain why high intensity stretching isn't the way to go. First of all, high intensity stretching might induce a stretch reflex. So if you're stretching like really intensely, your body wants to contract your muscles to bring them back to its normal length. The second is that high intensity stretching can actually create inflammation and put strain on your tendons rather than increasing the length of the fibers in the muscle by adding contractile units, which is known as a process called sarcomyogenesis. Now I know this is only early research, but I think it's useful to call out that Stretching like super, super intensely isn't necessarily proven to be more effective than low intensity stretching. So that's good news. I feel like I want to bring good news and I feel like that is just great news to hear. The last thing I wanna talk about is periodization. So periodization is basically dividing your training up into low intensity or volume phases and high intensity or volume phases. Periodization is something that's really well researched when it comes to sports performance and building muscle, but it's only just started to be studied when it comes to flexibility. Speaking to gymnastics coaches, and again, this isn't like science-based, um, so we can't fully know, um, but they seem to believe that taking like a week off from stretching, if you've been stretching regularly for a six week period, can actually help you, just help you recover, and then you can get back to doing some stretching. And personally, from my experience, that's been the case as well. Like there is a point where everything just kind of like hurts a little bit. But this is your friend Natasha talking. This isn't science Natasha talking. All I'm saying is that if you find yourself at a plateau, maybe it can help to take like a week off and then go back to stretching. Maybe that just gives you enough of a recovery to help you find like improvement gains in range of motion. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover, like coming up with the exercises, we know how much to stretch, we know how often to stretch, we've combined them so that we get our perfect stretch splitzing routine, splitzing. And then we've also got like a couple of other tips to do with like how intensely we should be stretching, taking a little break now and then, and that's basically got you covered. Now you should be good to go. Now I wanna be seeing you guys head round the back of it. <laughs> <laughs> foot round back oh my god i don't know what i'm saying i hope you guys enjoyed it give me a big thumbs up if you did hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos and i will see you guys very soon i love you bye